In the last few videos, we learned about linear functions, which were functions in which the highest degree term was a first degree term. And in this lesson and the next few lessons, we're going to go into a new topic of quadratic functions. And a quadratic function is a function in which the highest degree term is a second degree term. So an example of a quadratic function would be y is equal to ax squared plus q. Here we have our highest degree term over here, and we can see that our variable is raised to the power of 2. So we have a highest degree term as a second degree term. So this is an example of a quadratic function. And what's interesting about these functions is that when you graph these functions, their curves are going to take on the appearance of parabolic curves. So let's actually look at one of the simplest quadratic functions and graph that so we can understand what a parabolic curve is. So the simplest quadratic function is going to be f of x is equal to x squared. And if we were to graph this, the curve of f of x is equal to x squared is going to look something like this. So here we have f of x is equal to x squared. And there are a few things that we can notice about this graph. The first thing that we can notice is that it has this characteristic U shape, and it turns out that parabolic curves are going to have this kind of shape. They're either going to look like U's or they're going to look like upside down U's. So if you wanted to see an example of one of the upside down U parabolic curves, an example of a function that would look like that would be f of x is equal to negative x squared. That curve is going to look exactly like this curve, just flipped upside down. So it's going to look like that. And I've drawn these by hand, so they're a little bit wonky and not totally symmetrical. But the idea is that these curves are also going to have an axis of symmetry. We can see that this side is symmetrical to this side, and the same goes for this curve. This side is symmetrical to this side. So we have an axis of symmetry in these curves. Another thing that we can notice is that these parabolas are either going to be opening up or opening down. So this red curve here is an example of a parabola that opens upwards. We can see that the opening is facing the top, so we can say that this opens up. Whereas this parabola in purple is going to open down. The open part of the parabola is facing downwards, so it opens down. Depending on whether your parabola opens up or opens down, they're going to have either maximum or minimum points. So if we look at this red curve here, we can see that right over here, we have a minimum point. This is going to be the minimum point of our entire parabola. And this point is known as a vertex. If we look at the purple curve, we're going to have a maximum point. And that's because the curve is opening down. So we have a maximum point instead of a minimum. And that maximum point is also known as the vertex. So parabolas are going to have these characteristic U shapes. And at the bottom of the U, we have the vertex, which is either going to be the minimum point if the parabola opens upwards or the maximum point if the parabola opens downwards. So that's a very important thing to note is that at the minimum or maximum point of your parabola, we have what is known as the vertex of the parabola. So we can make a note of that here. The maximum or the minimum point is known as the vertex. And if your parabola opens upwards, it's going to be a minimum. Whereas if your parabola opens downwards, it's going to be a maximum point. Another thing that's important for us to note is that this vertex, this maximum or minimum point, is going to be present at the line of symmetry. The axis of symmetry of the parabola is going to go through the vertex. We have this side of the parabola, which is symmetric to this side. And this y-axis in this case is going to act as our axis of symmetry. And our axis of symmetry is going to go through the vertex. So let's look at an example of another parabola, but this time let's actually put in numbers in our Cartesian plane. So here we have a Cartesian plane, and let's say we have a parabola that looks like this. 
So this is our parabola in red. We can see that it's a parabola that opens upwards. So the vertex is going to be our minimum point, and that's going to be present right here. And another thing that we can notice is that our axis of symmetry is going to be the y-axis. So here is our axis of symmetry. And one thing that we can notice is that with this parabola, we have two x-intercepts. The graph is going to cross the x-axis at two points. And this is actually going to be characteristic of many parabolas that you see. Often we're going to see parabolas that are going to cross the x-axis at two points, meaning we have two x-intercepts. However, that might not always be the case. We could have a parabola that looks like this, that's somewhere over here. And in that case, we're not going to have any x-intercepts or y-intercepts for that matter. But most often, you're going to be seeing parabolas that do indeed cross the x-axis at two points, meaning we're going to have two x-intercepts. So what's one thing that we can notice about our x-intercepts over here? We notice that halfway between our two x-intercepts is going to be our axis of symmetry. So halfway between negative 2 and 2 is 0. And we can see that x is equal to 0 is our axis of symmetry. So let's quickly make a note of that. Our axis of symmetry is x is equal to 0. That is going to be just our y-axis here. So our y-axis in this case is acting as our axis of symmetry. And our x-intercepts are going to be negative 2, and 2. So our axis of symmetry is going to lie halfway between our two x-intercepts. In the next video, we're going to learn more about these quadratic functions and how to sketch a parabola by just noting a few of these things that we've learned in this video, which is that we are often going to have two x-intercepts, although that might not always be the case, but often it is, and halfway between our x-intercepts is going to lie our axis of symmetry, and our parabola is going to be symmetrical about that axis. Of course, that's what an axis of symmetry means. And our parabola can either open up or it can open down. So we're going to see how to tell whether we have a parabola that opens up or opens down. And we know that we have either a maximum or minimum point depending on whether it opens up or down, which is known as our vertex. So in the next video, we're going to go into more detail on each of these things and learn how to graph these functions easily and quickly.